thinking of moving to Canada, here is a list of 10 important things which you should definitely do before moving to Canada. Hey guys, this is Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad. So many of you were asking me, you know, to make videos on life in Canada, what we should do before moving to Canada, what we should do immediately after moving to Canada and so on. So here's the first video in this series on 10 things what you should do before moving to Canada. I've tried to arrange these points in a particular order. So initial few points might be pretty obvious for some people. But please try and watch the complete video because there would certainly be some points which would be which you would totally be unaware of. Okay guys, so the first and foremost thing which you should do after getting your PR is apply for jobs. Now this might seem very obvious but now when you have the PR and you have the right to work in Canada, it is much more easier to get a job rather than before. So you can go to different websites, different, uh, you know, the job portals, websites, or the, the career portals of different companies. I have uh, made a video on this. I'll provide the link to that video in the description box below. You can go uh, and check out that video and apply to the different, uh, through different websites. Okay, the second thing is doing your own research. Now, let's suppose that you have got a job offer. So in that case, you'll know that here's your office and you have to go to that particular city. But what if you don't have the job offer? You have to do your own research. You're actually doing it right now because you're watching this video. So you have to do your research in terms of the city. So you have to choose the city pretty wisely in terms of your job opportunities over there. So let's suppose you are from IT sector. In that case, you should go to probably Toronto or Ottawa or Vancouver. If uh, you just can't stand winters, then Toronto might not be the right place for you. So in that case, you should think of going to Vancouver or some other place. Uh, if you've got a friend or a family member residing in any of these cities, probably you should try considering going close to that friend because he'll help you, he or she will help you, help you in settling. So Okay, whether you have the job offer or not, now you have decided the city where you have to go. So the next thing to do is decide the right time. Now, some people, you know, might get the PR by the end of, in the month of October or November. So in that case, December, January or February might not be the best place to, you know, migrate to Canada. Primarily because of the weather conditions, you know, right? It's super cold in uh, most of the parts of Canada. So you should think twice before you know going in these three four months. Also, there's a very important reason because you know Christmas time, 15 days before and 15 days after Christmas, people are on vacation. So job hirings are also I I won't say that they're completely freezed, but yeah, they're quite steady and quite you know job hiring is quite low. So you should uh, you know decide when you should when you want to go to uh, Canada. Also, because of the weather, you know. If you're from a country like India, you know, it might be pretty harsh for you immigrating from, you know, Chennai to directly to in such so, so super, super cold weather. So time, yeah, take care of that as well. Okay, so now when you've decided where to go and when to go, in that case, you should book an accommodation, probably a temporary accommodation or a permanent accommodation in case you've got a job offer. If you haven't got the job offer, if you haven't got any job with you, in that case, you should definitely book a temporary accommodation because you'd never know which city you'll get the job or, or you know, how far your accommodation will be from your job. So, from your office level, sorry. Okay, so you can book an accommodation like a hostel or a hotel or a studio apartment from websites like hostel.com, booking.com, Airbnb, and there are several other websites as well. You should try and book the apartments or the accommodation, you know, as early as possible because I've seen that, you know, the rates actually go high, especially if you're going in the summers, then the rates actually go high if you're trying to book it just 15 days or, you know, one month before. So try and book the accommodation as early as possible, as soon as you decide your city and the time when you want to immigrate to Canada. Okay, now the fifth and very crucial point. And this is about enough money. 
You remember you submitted documents for proof of funds? This is when you need it. It's not the proof that you actually need, but the funds that you need now. So you're going to a different country. In the initial days, you'll have a lot of expenditure, you know, a lot of money in the accommodation, in the food, in the transport, in, you know, getting to know the country. If you eat in a restaurants, you know, it will be very expensive. So you should have enough money with you in case you don't get a job in the first three, four months, you should have enough money so that you can survive in Canada without any problem. So please take a note that, that you should have that amount of money or probably more than that if you have it, or you have a backup in your home, you know, just in case if you, if you're not finding any job and you don't want to quit so somebody can help you with that money, send you to, to your Canada so that you don't, uh, you know, you don't feel like coming back to your own country and giving up your dream. Another very important point is getting a medical insurance and that medical insurance should be for the first couple of months. Now you would say that, you know, Canada provides free medical facilities. So why should we get medical insurance? Now, just like Ontario, many of the provinces don't provide the medical free medical facilities in the first couple of months. You should consult, you know, you should check it out in their official websites that if the, when, you know, they're starting the medical facilities free of cost, just like Ontario, I said in Ontario, you don't get the medical facilities for the first three months. So let's suppose you landed in Canada, in Toronto for on 1st of August, you would be getting your, your um, medical, free medical facilities from 1st of November. So please take care of that. You should... In case you get sick, you have to visit a doctor, the chances would be very, very high. So it's definitely worth to get a medical insurance for the first three months or two months according to your province. Documents. You should have the documents with you very handy. So you're going to a different country, you know, you never, never know which kind of documents will be asked for any particular job. Maybe your education documents might be asked, so you should have the degrees, and your mark sheets with you. Maybe you, they ask for your prior employment, you know, the reference letters or something like that. So it's better to have all those documents with you pretty handy before you move to Canada. This one is for those shopperholic people watching me, just like me. So you know the places in your city where you can get the branded clothes, the good quality clothes and discounted rates, just like some factory outlets. And so you think that, you know, probably we can save some money getting clothes from your own city so that, you know, in the initial days you don't face any trouble. But you should, you can get the clothes like t-shirts or probably, you know, you know, shirts, formals, but don't think of getting winter clothes, especially like jackets or caps or gloves or shoes because the winter shoes I'm talking about, because these, you know, the clothes which you get in your city probably will not be able, you'll not be able to sustain in that harsh weather, in that cold weather. So th those jackets which you get over there, you know, they're very, very thick. They're, they're designed to sustain so that you can sustain in probably minus 25, minus 30 degrees Celsius temperature. So if you carry that, those, you know, those winter clothes from your country, to Canada probably they'll only take a lot of space in your luggage and they won't be of any use in the you know in those prime winter months of January, February and March. Okay, language. This might be a pretty obvious one for most of the people. So English and French are the two languages which are being spoken in Canada. Just you should do your research if you're going to Quebec, probably you know. French is the primary language which is being spoken by most of the people over there. So in that case, you should learn French because that will be very helpful for you. In case like, your, your spouse doesn't you know, understand or speak a very good English and you're going to uh, Toronto, so that might be problematic for him or her. So you should you know, utilize that time in the initial days. However, after you go, you get free English or French classes from the Canadian government. Uh, in the initial days for immigrants and that is all free of course as I just said so you can also utilize that okay now the last point last in my list but it's definitely a very important one as well you've visited the different 
job portals, you have checked jobs for your skill set, it's very important to check the employer's expectations. It might be a case that in your home country, a, a particular certification or course doesn't hold that much value, but in Canada, it is given much importance. So take a note of that as well, you know, do your own research on different job expectations, on the employer expectations and which all courses or which all certifications can, you know, give importance to your resume. So that will definitely help you, you know, give a kickstart in your job search in Canada. So you can use the time span, you know, a couple of months, whichever, whatever you have in the starting before migrating to Canada for your advantage in doing that certification course or whatever. So this, this was the another thing that I wanted to point out. Okay, there's one more thing I want to point out. It's an additional one, it's a bonus one for you. Uh, it's for people in India, or probably in some other countries where an OTP is required on mobile phones. So let's say that you know, you're in India and um, you want to do any transaction, you know, in everything nowadays, uh, OTP comes to your mobile phone. So in that case, if you're in a Canada or in any different country, international roaming, uh, you know, can come very handy and it will be very useful. So it doesn't charge much. I remember in Vodafone, it charged around 300 rupees for uh, to 250 rupees around uh, for a month. So it, I think it's a uh, case with most of the service providers. So whatever it is, if you think that, you know, you would need that OTP for any, any transactions, uh, you can activate international roaming on your local, in your home country's mobile number. So that, you know, that will be pretty handy. Okay guys, so it was the list of 10 most important things that I think everyone should do before moving to Canada. If you think there's any other points, any other important points that I've missed, please comment in the comment section below so that it can help other people as well. Also, please like this video and share it with your friends so that it can be helpful. Also, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get the latest videos which I upload every week. I upload so many videos on Canadian immigration and I'll be starting video series on Australian immigration from this weekend onwards. So please subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video.